Yo, yo, what's up, everybody? This is the very first episode of the Brand Man Podcast. We're calling this the No Labels Necessary Podcast with me and my guy. If y'all don't know him, go ahead and introduce yourself, sir. What's up, man? You can call me. Uh, let's go with Corey. Yeah, we don't call, for this. <laughs> <laughs> call me Corey on here. Hey, I was wondering what was coming. Yeah, <laughs> I had to think about it, bro. No, I, I, I want to stick with that. I want to stick with that. Okay, and y'all, y'all already know our faces, right? Right on. Many of y'all, some of y'all might not. You know, welcome new folks. Welcome new folks. But um, of course, we're the two co-founders of Contra Brand Agency, music marketing agency. Done a lot of cool stuff. Whatever, whatever. But we're doing this podcast just to like loosen it up a little bit. Talk about some things that we feel like we don't get the chance to talk about in the format of some of those video requests y'all sent out. Um, but y'all start to be able to see how we think about whether it's a marketing campaign, something happening in culture, um, a lot of cool things. Y'all see those conversations we talk about behind the scenes. So we're gonna get into some, to some topics today, but Corey, you wanna add anything to that? Yeah, it's gonna be dope. Like you said, I feel like it's gonna be a really good opportunity for them or the audience to see like how we think about stuff, you know? Cause I feel like a lot gets lost in translation in a, in a 10 minute YouTube video, mm. you know what I'm saying? It's only, it's only so much that even sometimes we wouldn't even fit in there. But we know how much of, I feel like the education in music just comes from having conversations with people that know shit you don't know, you know what I'm saying? So hopefully they're able to pick up game the same way that we kind of out here picking up game. <laughs> that's real, that's real. Yeah. I, for a second I was gonna be like, I don't know man, it's like, man, do we sound uh, non-humble, whatever that, the opposite of that is. It's like, yeah, y'all are blessed to be able to hear our conversations that we have behind the scenes, but that is true. Yeah. Like, you literally learn. Like, right? on the fly, bro. I feel like some on of the, the best fly. information I picked up was like, you know, you like chilling with some random dude your homie introduced you to, and then he just, he just dropped some game out of nowhere. You're like, damn, bro, it's like three in the morning. I ain't Facts. think he was gonna, Facts. you know, he was gonna <laughs> go there, but he went there, let's do it, so. Yeah. Yeah. In a way they are, bro. In a way they are kind of blessed. You know, so I don't want to, you know, say it like that, but in, in a way, you know. <laughs> nah, nah, that really is how this works. That really is how this works. So, like, uh, conversations are everything in the music industry because there's so much happening over time. We'll always talk about the the principles, the strategies, but like that little bit of information that you can use before the rest of the world finds out, or because you see it a little differently for the rest of the world gets it. That's where the sauce is a lot of times, and yeah. so, yeah. so uh, yeah, I guess. I'm excited that we're about to do this thing, man. Yeah, it's gonna be fun, it. man. I Let's really, I really like where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> Early reviews coming in. Y'all go ahead and drop those. We're gonna stream this live at some point when we get a flow. You know what I mean? I feel like that'll be a dope thing to do. Yeah, it's but like, um, it's like an episode of 10 and up type of thing. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. <laughs> give us some, some kinks to work out. But let, without further ado, we're going to give it our first topic, you know. Um, and we'll love if y'all always, you know, go ahead and throw in f new topics. By the way, we, we, we are that type of pod we want to talk about what the people want to hear. At the same time, if y'all ask us, like, how do I, you know, blow up my fan base and general shit, then, uh, yeah, you know, it'll be just avoid it. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the topic number one. All right, what we're talking about is the fact that Russ said you can't be blackballed. Do you want to watch the video on it or anything to get a little context or you remember? Yeah, I, 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 I remember the clip. All right, so go ahead and break down like what you remember and then we're going we're gonna to talk about it. Yeah, so if, I, if I'm remembering correctly, we probably should have played it, but if I'm remembering correctly, he was saying that you can't be blackballed because um, – like just because like the energy can't stop the tools mm -hmm. that you kind of have to reach people, right? Yeah. Like they can't they can't control your recording process. They can't control your access to your audience through social media. So are you saying that the only way you can truly be blackballed is like industry people stopping to do things to help you? But I think he made the point that like like regular artists can get like a Spotify connect. You know what I'm saying? Like or I mean or even if they don't, they still can't stop the access you have to people. And a lot of times, right. they're forces to hand. Right of these bigger institutions, right? We might not like you, but if you're doing, you know, X amount of thousands of streams or millions of streams in this world, then it's like, well, shit, we're going to look crazy by not yeah. working with you, right? So, yeah, yeah, that's the that's the general point he was making. I don't know if I'm missing anything with that, but... No, I think that's about right, because I yeah. know there's, like, the, the baby that's been popping up, and then there's... Tory Lanez. Tory Lanez, yeah. right? They both have had their issues where it might split... The industry in some ways is tart in terms of how some people or the people behind the scenes talk about it but i'm with him in terms of you can't be blackballed in the traditional way yeah right there's no 
stopping you from being seen by the world completely. Yo, what happened to Buddy? Like yeah. that, that can't happen. I think the funny thing about it is to an artist like Tory Lanez, to an artist like the baby, them being blackballed is really them just getting treated like a re- regular a ass regular artist. artist yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like, yeah, you don't have access to those additional resources <laughs> in the industry machine anymore. So yeah, it's like, okay, you get blocked out of maybe some of that right there. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, now you just got to eat like the rest of these artists eat. But y'all are in a better position because at least you had a certain level of awareness. You probably got a certain amount of fans. Some of them probably were fake. Um, depending on, well, not, and that's not even talking on them specific, but like just the way some people might blow. Okay. You might not have as many fans you think you have, but even that, you know, it's what the regular artists got to deal with. Like they got to deal with the real numbers, make real decisions based off of that. And if they want some connects, like what you said, I got to figure out how to finesse and get somebody to like me inside Spotify. I got to talk. I got to reach out. I got (laughs) to figure stuff out. Got to reach out. Yeah. And I mean, like, I think that like, that's the part of it that. Uh, I feel like it's more of like a falling from grace type of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like if your yeah. last year and a half, two years, you know what I'm saying? Your idea of a promo strategy was like, yo, I'm going to hit the VMAs and then I'm going to be on this late night TV show. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be the, the face of most necessary and like rat cat. Like I, I can understand like how it feels like then you've been pushed out of your, your yep. major, your major, um, your major marketing machine, right? But yep. what's interesting about, the way that I guess Russ is seeing it is it, it feels a lot more traditional. Well, like, he's basically saying like, bro, like those are just industry institutions. Like, yeah, you can yeah. be pushed out of the industry circle, but like if your goal is really just to make money in this shit and do well, like you'll be good. Facts. If your goal is to be a part of the institution, then yeah, you got a problem. Like right. so it's a real thing to worry about. But if you just like, man, like, like you were saying, they can't like blackball you in the traditional sense of we going to truly cut your money off. Yep. Cause exactly. like we saw with Tori, it's like bro, as long as you can post on your Instagram and post on TikTok and you understand back end infrastructure, like you'll be all right, you know? And it's, it's interesting because I think that whole conversation is, or I, I feel like we, it's gonna sound wild, but I feel like we need to see more artists that get blackballed that are forced to go through that process. Mm. Cause I think more people need to see that it's possible to do it without those type of institutions support you. We saw it first with the six nine shit, right? It was kinda of the first time people were talking like, damn bro, he ain't yeah. people ain't rocking with him and but he's still doing crazy numbers, yeah. right? That that opened the conversation. And then uh NBA Youngboy. Right? Like NBA, NBA Youngboy. NBA yeah, people need to be watching, buddy. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so it's like then here comes NBA Youngboy, black ball or you know air quote black ball, but still doing crazy is numbers, he, right? Is black ball even the word we use for him? Like what I still don't quite understand his situation, why he's not getting the support. Like, maybe I missed that part. I wasn't paying attention at that time. But, yeah, like, his, why are people not, like, rocking with him like he should be from an industry side of things? Yeah, so some of it is, I think, like, earlier antics. Like, early NBA Youngboy was pretty pretty wild. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, young street artists. This, this yeah. is to be expected. Yeah. And then some of it is, like, politics between him and the little dark beef. You know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah. so it's like. Yeah, yeah. Certain aspects, I guess, Dirk could be seen as the big artist. You know, it's in certain points, probably a lot more people siding with him over. And what aspects is Dirk a bigger artist in NBA? I mean, I don't know. Well, I think from a mainstream look standpoint, I would say I don't, it's yeah. not even close in terms of reality. Yeah, but but also yeah. that it's like he has that look. He looks bigger to that point, but it's because they're not fucking with NBA. Young that's what? A, like, like that's that. the crazy part about like the industry <laughs> perception and how that goes because. Look, you know, I don't have any size in this race or whatever. You know what I mean? No horse in this race. I, I listen to Dirk shit. I listen to NBA Youngboy. But just mathematically, as far as I've seen, NBA Youngboy blows him out the park. Industry-wise, like, obviously, Dirk is a, a, a far bigger phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. He could probably, because of that, monetize and get bigger looks. And outside of the industries, brand building might end up having more money long term because of that. Unless, yeah, you know, yeah. NBA might flip that money into real estate. You know, and real estate don't care who you are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're going for catalog. So, well, catalog too. Yeah, you're going for catalog. Especially, bro, we know yeah. the numbers people are getting <laughs> off of the buyouts, right? Yeah. These multiples. So, so I don't know, man. It's it's interesting one to see him. So if you look at him, you look at Russ. All right, these are people who are big and doing it without yeah. in a current day climate. But like you said, you were like, all right, part of this black ball is okay. I might I might not be able to pop, pull up to the MTV Awards, yeah, and as a part of my rollout, I might not be able to pull up to 
the Jimmy Fallon show, Ellen, and all these things that that were a part of my rollout. Yeah. But guess what? You can pull up to Logan Paul. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can pull up to uh, what's a Kasai or whatever his name is. Yeah, Kasai, like yeah. any of these YouTubers and people like that. A lot of people y'all need to start using a PR strategy where y'all just like I mean not no y'all need to, you can add that on but if you don't have those big traditional shows which don't have any impact anyway like most of them yeah we're like let's not even con- get in. You know, content generation exactly yeah, yeah. Well, let's not get into the TV <laughs> show that never mind um let's bring it up on the episode I was gonna talk about the TV show that uh one of the clients were supposed to be on and the sh- the show was trash or whatever uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> well they were on it but the ratings were trash but um. Uh, but yeah, so it's like, yeah, like Tory Lanez, it's still Tory Lanez. The baby is still the baby. Now, you know, there's going to be some communities that don't rock with him because of some of the things they said, but there's plenty of people yeah. who are still going to give him that interview. And yeah, we bro. know Vlad's going to interview everybody. He don't yeah. give a fuck, you know, what kind of, he wants those views. Yeah. So like the meet, the pull up, the media run is there, man. There's so many third party uh, publications. And the funny part about it is, you know, that would be like a nice indie underground wave to follow traditionally. But the difference between doing that back in the day versus doing it today is these indie underground like pages, channels, influencers, they actually have more impact than, yeah, way the, more. Yeah. than the traditional. So yeah. it's like yeah. a weird mindset that people are still going for it. And they have the chance of. Like, I mean, you know, it's like you, you post things on the internet, everybody has a chance to go viral. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, every day you post, there's a, there's a, there's a little little shot in the dark at the right. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, it could be like a smaller page could give you just as much, if not more, of an impact than the bigger accounts. They may be able to get you like big yep. reach consistently, right? Yep. Just because they have the audience. But like, I've seen bigger moments come from like a page that be small, bro, like 20,000 followers and like a random artist post pop off and get 20 million views on it. You're like, damn, that's crazy. Like, you know, could it have happened from the shade room? Maybe, but Maybe. it didn't. It happened. <laughs> it happened over here, right? Because the internet would cost it more. <laughs> yeah, it would have cost more. Exactly. The bang for buck 100% wouldn't happen yeah. the same. It's like, damn, I just paid. I don't want to say a number, but it's like I just paid <laughs> 40 bucks for a 20 million dollar post or some shit because it just right. the world looked up. But I think that. That's the part that's not like seen enough, you know. So I don't think people still think of these Instagram accounts as like media entities, right? Like when you think media entity, you think, you know, radio stations, you know, what I'm saying big publications. Yeah. I don't think they're thinking about like, oh shit, I could just go live or like at rap and do an interview. And like the thing about like these people and like you mentioned the influencers versus the industry stuff is like, bro, the influencers don't care as long as you got the money to pay for it. And they like you, right? Of course, they got to see your audience connection. They got to like you, but it's, it's money-based. So it's like, they don't give a fuck about none of the industry stuff. It's just like, yo, do, does my audience know you or like you or do I like you? And can you afford this invoice? If you can, if those things are in order, like, you all right. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be good. You're going to be good. So I, I think, like, that's yeah. why I say I feel like a lot more artists, as fucked up as it sounds, need to get blackballed because it's the only way I think artists underneath them are going to pay attention. To watch a bigger artist have to go through that, and figure that stuff out. Like we all had to watch, you know, like Tory figure out and like the six nine NBA young one. All these different people figure it out. Like they have people paying attention to them. Like the the indie artists that's coming up that's doing that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like there are a lot of indie artists who do do that and they're like they're smart for doing it, but they're they're not gonna be popping enough for another couple of years for like the industry a whole right to pay attention. So it's gonna take right. these like massive stars falling off and then we all watching them try to figure out and them going through the same process as other artists for us to go like. Or for everybody else to go like, damn, like I could just do that. You know what I'm saying? I could, right. I could get. You could get you an interview get with. Creative. Yeah, you could get an interview with the music page before you could probably get on Jimmy Fallon. You know what I'm saying? Easy, bro. Easy, easy. <laughs> the, the crazy thing is, like, the reason it has so much more impact is one, some of them are just underutilized. Period. Right. Yeah. So there's some age. I'm just gonna say rap because you say rap, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're, like. People haven't exploited it to that extent yet. Maybe they're trying to keep people from doing it. I don't know. Maybe people have tried. But because of that, people are going to look at it as a new thing, right? But that might run out, yeah. right, after a certain period of time. But what's not going to run out is these influencers who have a legitimate perspective and they truly A&R who they let on their platform. Yeah. 
Right, and that's what we love about TikTok so much. I was like, man, I was so surprised. At, like you were like, ah, oh, nah, I can't put that song on yeah. my platform. I can't do a dance to that song because my people aren't gonna want to listen to it. They gonna know it's trash. I don't like it. It's not gonna get any blue views. <laughs> yeah. The algorithm's not gonna like it. Like it's all bad. So I'm just not gonna take the money. Yeah. But because of that, people have so much more respect and value because it's actually like I gave it the okay. Yeah. All right. Like Anthony Fantano talks about something, he gives it opinion. People respect it and think it's him you know what i mean sean yeah. c talks about something and he gives his perspective they respect it and feel like it's coming from him because it's not attached to uh you know the industry and all that stuff but yeah. someone gets on the mtv awards bt awards or whoever grammys you like i don't know how this person got up in here yeah. like, it was like i you guess know. they're important because yeah. they're there yeah. but i don't know who the fuck that is yeah <laughs> like you just know they know somebody <laughs> We know they know somebody, yeah. right? That's how we think now where we are. But from a fan, you just like, yeah, who's, who's that? Yeah, who's that? You yeah. know what I mean? And you might kind of give it some credence, like maybe they're important and maybe they're good because they're there. You might. Like, especially back in the day, it definitely would be a little bit more um, for that. But now it's just more like, who is that? You go on your life. It's so much content. You don't remember the person yeah. versus if my favorite YouTuber, my favorite TikToker or whoever says this shit goes and you're like, who is that? And I'm going to check it out because I follow this person because I almost look at them, you know, like a friend, right? We have mm -hmm. something in common, right? Yeah. So if they like it, I might listen to it. If you recommend it, I'm way more likely to check out the shit than, I don't know, somebody. That I, I don't know how you rock, buddy. I don't, I've never heard yeah. you play any music. I don't know how you dress. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you eat plain food without season. I don't, we might not be at a cross the same, you know? So, like, that's the value of, I don't know, man. These, these underground influencers. We're going. We've been talking about that part for years, though. So, you know, I, I might think we've obviously implemented before, uh, with artists, and we've seen some artists do it well. But I'm just so surprised that the tipping point has not come. Where, you know, what I'm saying like you see people going hard yeah. on that shit. I mean, I, 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 I kind of have my my theories. I think a part of it is like. Every time a one gets really big, the industry does come and snatch them up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we we've seen that with like, to me, the best recent examples like Zia's. You know what I'm saying? Like Zia's just be crazy on YouTube. Oh yeah, industry came and snatched them. But even like, what was that one TikTok guy we worked with for like one campaign, and then he was working at like a label. I don't remember. He, I, I can't think his name, but um, <laughs> see, yeah, about to about to well, hold that one second, man. Cause I want to talk about something that we're that somebody who is doing it pretty uh, damn good. Cause you brought it up the other day. We kind of both talked about it, but you had been watching even more. What's the artist's name? Is it Ice something? What's the girl who got like the froey hair? She's someone who's doing the PR strategy, right? Oh, Ice Spice. Ice Spice. Yeah, like yeah, break break yeah. that shit down, man. So the strategy of what she's doing. Just the, the game you peep and how you see and and, and are, are like, all right, yeah, they're doing they're one they're doing this intentionally. And then, like, why you? Why do you feel like they're doing it right? Because you've seen more on it than, than I have. Yeah. All right. So I got I got to paint the picture first. Then. So go ahead. So the the so we we have the the influencer strategy that we do that we call IGPR, right? I, I feel like we made it up, so I feel like we have to explain it. Yeah. But basically, yeah. <laughs> what IGPR is, is it borrows from elements of like traditional PR campaigns. So like if you were to hire a publicist, the publicist would be like, hey, like, you know, who do you think your music appeals to? Or like, what do you like? Right, you might be like, well, I like gardening, and I think my music appeals to people who have mental health issues. That publicist is gonna get you on, you know, the cover of a gardening magazine, they're gonna get you a, a podcast interview on, you know, maybe like a mental health podcast, right? Mm -hmm. They're gonna make you do a pop up performance at a local plant shop in your city, right? They're gonna they're gonna <laughs> do things that put you in front of those specific people that like those, those right. specific things, right? So now we take that to social media. We ask clients the same question, like, yo, what is, what do you stand for? Who are the people you think you appeal to, right? What do you think those people care about? And so if the client is like, yo, I, I like gardening, and my fans are into gardening, and you know, I want to speak to the people that talk about mental health. We might go get, you know, their song made into a clip behind like a, I don't know, like a, a video about the best compost to buy or something, right? 
and we put the song in the background of the video and we blast it out to right a, a hundred plant pages right and then we we take a clip of them talking about them going through their mental health stuff and we might put it on like a music blog page right so we're, we're taking that same strategy that publishers were taking the PR in the press world applying it to content and social media so the thing that I noticed recently that we started talking about was like how Yeet was implementing that. Oh yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. And true. So yeah. I, I was talking about how like Yeet, as like, as he got closer to his his album, I started noticing that like our generation music, which is a really popular music page on Instagram, was posting a lot more about him. So it's like they were posting videos like you know here's Yeet in the studio with a random artist, and like here's you know Yeet X Y Z song just get hot hit ten million streams. Oh, look at what this Yeet fan did, right? Like all they were covering like Yeet's life a lot <laughs> leading up to the, the the album rollout. And I was like, yo, like I think this is a marketing strategy. Um, he's implementing a version of what we do for IGPR. He's just hitting a more like broad base. Now fast forward to the Ice Spice thing. And I mean, I, so I'll say this anyway. I already personally have my suspicions about Ice Spice because the very first time I ever saw her was a, a post on DJ Academics. And DJ Academics Dang. has been very vocal about the fact that one, he charges a lot of money for a post on his page, and that two, he doesn't typically like to work with underground artists. So out the gate, it's like I would, I believe him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I believe he <laughs> charges a lot. So it's like she yeah. got the money for it. And the video debuted on World Star, which was just another. Yeah. another thing. You know, that's, that's two big bags right there. Bag. But but what solidified it to me was there was this clip. I, I think it was like. It was a meme about a line from one of her songs. She has a song where she's like, "We both from the Bronx, so so you, I know that you dirty or something like that, right?" And so like the internet was like memeing that clip, and I remember scrolling on my timeline, seeing the first music page that posted about it, and looking at it, laughing at it. And I scroll, and then I see like a second page. I'm like, "Damn, that's crazy!" Like they posted the same thing, and then like something in me is just like, "Nah, you know better than this, bro." Like go 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 look into it. You know what I'm saying? Go check it out. So I just went to like maybe like four or five of the pages like we use that yeah. we know, you know do stuff and like they all have posted around like the, the same clip maybe within like 25 to 35 minutes of each other i'm like oh this is a marketing campaign like somebody's running this around her and they killing it by they're the killing way. it yeah they're so they, it. they've been doing the same strategy if you look at like how they've been keeping her name out there it's all a bunch of personality clips that are getting seeded out and blasted onto different music pages i've seen one right before i came here it was like a, a video of her like walking in heels and like falling down or something. And like I saw it on like three or four music pages, you know what I'm saying, like today. And so like they're consistently doing it with her, like, oh, here's a lifestyle thing that happens around her. Let's get these 20 something pages to blast out. Here's a big music thing that happened around her. Get these, like they're doing the exact same strategy, the IGPR strategy, and they're doing it really well. And this is how, this is how you know that shit is going crazy. Like, bro, it's only been like a month and a half that she's been, right. as, as she, like, it feels like, True. Like a much longer time. Like yeah. I was thinking of the other day, I was like, damn, the video just came out like a month ago. <clears throat> the song started going viral like five, six weeks ago. You know what I'm saying? It feels like such a long time, but it's only been like a month, month and a half. But like they keep her out there so much doing the IGPR stuff, so mm-hmm. just blasting her personality out. Like any little thing that happens in her life, bro, they hit, they hit the, so the whole network with it. Right. And it, that shit works. We see it work. Like one congratulations, Ice Spice's team, whoever yeah, actually whoever doing going, that yeah. thing, right? Because <laughs> one, people always people look at those campaigns and they have such a short sighted way of understanding the results that can come from it. Yeah, right? I always see like, oh, what streams am I getting, or how many followers am I getting from that? One, yeah. all right, cool, you riding the back of a song that's that's moving, but there's processes, right? There's marketing a song, there's blowing a song up, then it's also blowing the artists up as a whole and what doing that what they're doing this is a part of how you actually break the artists in people's minds right that's how i look at it like you break that barrier i'm in your mind you know who the fuck i am right you know one of my songs at least one of my songs of course uh, a lot of people know more than one of her songs yeah but even if it was just one song you know that yeah. one song and you know who the fuck this artist is you got some sense of their personality Mm -hmm. all that hating on her cool that's a part of it right like i can lean into that yeah. so i can build some conversation on it then we can flip the the hate into more attention and get some more conversation going that's what it looks like yeah but it's going hard in a short period of time because it's it's not going to be uh it's not going to be remembered and potent enough if you don't do it in a short enough period yeah. of time so you got to make sure you double down that a uh, fifty thousand dollars over five months is not fifty thousand dollars 
over a month and a half, a week, a week right? <laughs> Depending on how you how you go. Now, I'm not saying everybody's in a position where even if you have it, you should be spending it in a short period of time. It depends on what leg of the campaign is, all that stuff. Yeah. But, but like, they're, yeah, they're killing her shit, bro. They're but, killing her shit. And the other thing, I just thought about this in the moment, but it's crazy is, like, she's doing what a lot of our artists have a problem with doing which is putting the face of the viral song exactly like you know that's probably the biggest issue a lot especially because i mean she went viral through tiktok like everybody else right like that's the biggest issue those artists have yo the song got a hundred million streams on it you don't know who the fuck made that song right you couldn't you couldn't put a you could they could walk past you and you wouldn't know but it's like you know who made this song because they made sure to just keep her out there and like make sure like we're seeing her face bro like i see her face at least like nine times a week like easy at least yeah she just be popping up and (laughs) then she has that fortune a lot of times it helps when you're in that first leg of your breaking period to have a unique look yeah now that just might be the way she she dresses and shit you know what i mean yeah um but like just a little afro you know what i mean the complexion of her skin it's a little slightly different look than what people are are used to seeing just like at the beginning when weekend had that hair yeah. You know what I'm saying? That was that made a huge impact. He was also smart by like breaking that mold and if he didn't want to like commit to that forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um and doing it in the timing he did, but I don't know if it would have hit just the same if he, you know, if he had like a low cut Caesar, yeah. you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> breaking out and and everything. So so yeah, it's interesting to watch these uh these campaigns. But yeah, congrats to y'all. We're gonna find find a uh, move to another topic, but congrats to Ice Spice team, because we've been uh yeah watching that we talk about that one oh good but you did mention something bro so when you brought up zias it's crazy how labels sign influencers these days to me like it's so interesting but you don't hear any conversations heavy about it like the influencers that are being signed by labels i think zias people were actually pretty aware of there's a decent awareness but like so many of these smaller ones curators influencers Hey man, they they get a from what I've hear I've heard typically it's not like a doesn't seem like a, a, a massive life changing amount for a lot of them. Yeah. But it's more like, hey man, you know, we'll, we'll keep throwing you some bread if you make yeah. sure you respond to the emails in a timely manner. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We'll get your passes to all the festival. We'll make your lifestyle look look right. Lit, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah, like. Exactly. <laughs> I wanted I want to know what the signings look like. Right. Like, all right, if you had to sign. In a, a, an influence, so like I wouldn't take a, a label deal. I'm in an exclusive deal if I was an influencer, right? Unless yeah. they were going crazy. Um, and the ones that I know who are signed, they don't have an exclusive deal. But if you were a label, how would you approach it? If I was a label, how would I approach like, someone influence? How influence? if I had to like just have it my way, and I'm gonna say I'm a what, what kind of influencers would you be going towards, uh, going at, and like what kind of deals would you try to break bread with them on? I think, so if I was the label, I would go after music reviewers, like people who just review music, any type of reaction channel or reviewish type of channel. Right. I would go after the music, like blog promo pages, like Mm -hmm. so the Instagram accounts, the TikTok accounts, and I would go after meme accounts that have a music focused audience. So like there's one page I follow called Grand Wizard, Chat nigga is built off the DJ Academics brand. It's a meme page, but he has a music focus on it. So like pages like that. Or like there's another one called like Tyrone. Like Tyrone has a, which I actually think might be be owned by a really big entity. But if I was a label, I would go after those. Yeah. And so I think there'll be a couple of different ways I would try to do it. The pages, meme accounts, music pages, I would probably try to like outright buy and maybe just offer the creator like a really large like buyout deal, you know? Yep. Look at how much money you're making a year. Okay, you generate 150K. You know what I'm saying? I'll give you, I don't know. Not even, most of them. Yeah, but let's just, you know, let's, let's, <laughs> okay, let's, let's let the big ones go, right? Probably try to bottom out right just so I could hire somebody internally. Yep. Or bottom out right and then give them a job. Like, yo, I'll give you, I don't know, 400K for the page and then hire you on under 85K a year salary or something to keep running right. the page, right? Um, but now we going to just keep it exclusive to our our artists, well, maybe not even that. Maybe even be like, yo, you can still take whatever promo money you get from it. But like, whenever we got some shit that need to go up on this page, that shit going up on. It's gas. Page. Yeah, like it's we gas, need we yeah. need to press the gas. Yeah. Full blown. <laughs> this is coverage, daily news for this artist. That type of vibe. Yeah. yeah, them. I think the ones that have a brand like their face attached to it. I don't know, that that one that one's that's a harder one because I think 
I think hiring them as almost like an employee, like a similar buyout model and then turn them into an employee would probably be what makes the most sense as a label, but they're not going for that. You know what I'm saying? Like a smart one wouldn't go for that. Yeah. So I would probably just try to work out some type of a yearly lump sum where either I get a certain amount of artists I can push you that you have to do, or it affords me an extremely discounted promo rate. So if you typically charging 10 K per video, I want it for 800, you know what I'm saying? And in order to get it for 800, I'm willing to give you, I don't know, 100K up front right now, you know what I'm saying? Um, or something. Because if I know, I, yo, I might have, you know what I'm saying? Like, I might push this one artist to you, shit, eight times this year alone, you know what I'm saying? That's going to that's gonna save me 80 bands. Yeah, in that scenario, like 80 bands plus, you know what I'm saying? Like, in the, in the long run. So I'm willing to do that right now. If I know I got at least five or six like that, and I think a lot of influencers would do that. Like, if a label was like, yo, like, I'm going to pay you to still pay you. It just needs to be a discounted rate. Most of them are going to go for that. Bro. Like, <laughs> they're going to go for that. Because I don't think they would be thinking of it the same way. But I don't know. I've never, I've never thought about it. I would I would love to talk to, like, one of the ones that have done it and see, like, because I feel like most of them just get hired, bro. They get, like, bought, like almost like work for a whole hired. lot of yeah. them look, get hired. Yeah. I think I like the buyout deal, like, for the meme pages because – the meme pages without having a face, you can damn near throw anybody. Yeah, anybody there. Know, yeah. I like keeping the same person in the role because they're already, you know, they know it. It's they the cost the of community. training and all that stuff. Yeah. You don't have to deal with any of that stuff. Just let them, let them rock. Right, keep them numbers up. And the complexity definitely comes for the individual influencer because the individual influencer has more of a brand to uphold. Right, mm-hmm. you can't just throw somebody and replace them. We've seen people do that and. It's a hard game, man. Yeah, at bringing yeah. and introducing other people, you can't just dip dip off. But like, I think the lump sum deal is nice. I think it would be. I'll probably focus on orchestrated campaigns and somebody that makes sense for their brand. So you have to be a lot more selective. That's another reason why you can't just like buy them all out, right? You'd have to say, all right, this person is great for this audience, and maybe I'm focused heavy on R and B. Or maybe I'm focused heavy mm-hmm. on rock. You know, if I'm going to somebody who's general but impactful, let's go insert like Anthony Fantano, which he probably would never do that. But like, okay, those people would be one off. I would never try to buy them out because it's just too, yeah. it's too much of a variety. Yeah. But somebody who's like in my bag. So if I'm an indie label, especially, I try to come up with some kind of relationship where you can curate. Because major labels are, I haven't seen them be good at. At truly, maybe they don't have the time to, or funny enough, the resources to really bring their attention to using a lot of those influencers right on the long yeah. term. But indie labels, like they're real, they they're they creative. Get they get yeah. it. They yeah. they get the shit. You know what I mean? I mean, I think too. Uh, a, a lot of the, at least the situations I've seen in the past that I was pretty sure was the influencer signed to a major label is. They go from being, like you said, like a trusted voice of the of the, the E Streets, if you will, right? When it right. comes to music. So it's like, yo, I know this guy put me on to a bunch of random stuff. And then out of nowhere, they just go to like only talking about bigger artists, right? Or only covering bigger artists. And it's like, I don't think the labels realize when they make them make that change that they're killing off the the brand trust of the influencer. So over time, the value of the influencer, it, like, it starts to decrease from the moment they start doing that. Mm, um, yeah. And then it's like a lot of, especially like music curators, a lot of them maintain that reputation by being able to say like they were the first ones to talk about somebody. Right, so, right, right. So now if it's like, I mean, unless you was a label, like, you know, of course, I guess if you have your smaller artists, you can still help them kind of maintain that, that image, that look. But it's like they don't have the ability to like naturally go. Like, like there's a there's an artist that pops every couple of months. Like every music curator knows, like, yo, if I don't make a post talking about this person, I'm gonna look out the loop. So I feel like when influencers get locked into these label deals where they can't talk about those artists, they look like they're out the loop. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so exactly. then their audience starts to lose trust in them and then it effectively, uh, basically making how effective they are, like, like less, you know? And so I think that's Speaking what a lot of them are. Yeah. Speaking of, I think you, you touched on something why like TikTok cur- curators have brought so much value to underground marketing again because mm-hmm. one we know the transferability from tiktok is stupid when like somebody just look when, when something happens on tiktok it can move so yeah. and their curator impact is better than any of the other uh, curator impacts i've seen in yeah. the last like half decade but because of that personal out the loop aspect of things 
you can truly activate a campaign and get people to talk about you without ever having to well i don't say ever having to pay but paying cheaper pages that they're following right just to get discovered by them and then because they got the fomo i gotta be the first to introduce them then you use that human behavior for them Mm -hmm. to go ahead and start putting you out into this uh you know I was about to say manosphere, the <laughs> the artist sphere, the industry sphere, all all that stuff right there. Because because like once you get tap into human behavior, it wins. That's why the uh, the open verse challenges were so big for yeah. a second, right? Because now it's playing into an artist ego for me to get seen, so I'm a flex, yeah, right. And then I see other people are actually getting attention from this, so that's even more important for me to get in. Oh well, dang, and I actually might end up on a track, right? That becomes even another game. So it. And at the end of the day, you get all this gain from people putting out your own song. So yeah. it was just a perfect human behavior experiment. And when it, so like when you look at these curators, like because I feel like it hasn't been legitimate curators in the last five years. I haven't been that many of them. It was like a deficit. But now with TikTok, it's a lot of like legitimate, yeah. like you know, upcoming curators that people truly look at for their opinion on music. You know what I mean? It was yeah. almost because we know there were some pages on Instagram there were that curated music, but it almost wasn't cool for some for a while. Yeah, it was, uh, I, you think, know what I mean, I think the Instagram community theirs is a lot more like bloggish. Like you can tell it, it borrows from like traditional right blog, blog. So TikTok right. feels more. It's like it yeah, feels like a million. I'm trying to think of a person like a million, like I guess, like DJ academics, right? It's just like all these. That's what I'm saying. These small personalities with faces attached. To whereas, like, yeah, Instagram is more like, oh, here's a, here's a, a, a big brand that is maintained. It's like, like no different than like yep. a complex, right? Or yep. pigeons and planes or something. So I think I think that's the difference in it. Like TikToks feel a lot more personal because you can't really. Well, I mean, but even TikTok has like big, or it's starting to build a culture of like big music repost pages like Instagram. Like it's still in its infantile. Yeah, it's like it's hard to be successful yeah. though. Yeah, it's very way. hard to be successful. Like I I think I maybe know of like four or five that do it really well. That didn't already have a brand, but like they're on TikTok building a brand as a faceless faceless music curator. Very hard thing to do on TikTok. <laughs> very, See, very. That's what I'm saying. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. Real curators are coming back because yeah. you are not a curator if you're a brand. Yeah. There's no way a brand can legitimately be a real curator at scale, most of them at least, Mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, it becomes more commercial and people don't really know who they're trusting and and it it just doesn't work. Colors has probably been the best I've seen like in the modern era and space. I was like colors and colors and probably pigeons and planes. Pigeons and planes, I don't consider them modern anymore. Oh, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. They're they're current, you know yeah. what I mean? They're still yeah. doing their thing, and they're saying, some yeah. of the best, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, like they've been around in the game for yeah. a minute, you know that. what I mean? I feel that. I feel and that. Colors has too, but like Colors is still like catching a new wave because of the video format and all that stuff. Yeah. Pigeon Planes isn't that; it's traditional, right? But I'm saying like, like when you go back. The DJs used to be curators. Yeah. It was a person. And you know, if I go listen to this dude, this dude's set's gonna go a certain way. Yeah. This guy has a certain type of taste, you know what I mean? That actually means something. Versus and when you listen to these individual curators on TikTok, it's another person. Again, I already know what he vibes with, the type of stuff he hates, especially the ones who do commentary, right? Yeah. Like what they don't like. I and I and just like a news story where you might watch four or five different channels or four or five people talk about the same issue, like I'm willing to now go see what that curator thinks. It's like, yeah. I know this guy thinks that way, yeah. but I wonder if he's rocking with the new Kendrick Lamar track or the new Yeet shit or whatever it is, you know? Yeah. So like there's, we're in a space where like, there's like this renaissance when it comes to legitimate curators and it's gonna make it interesting. I really feel like the kids these days are going through this is the most respectable music period since the nineties. Like I feel like the two thousand and fourteen, fifteen on has been the most respectable. Like music has been going up. Like two thousands, yeah. which is a whole another. Like I, I know I'm diverting. Two <laughs> thousands were trash, bro. A lot of great music that I love. I was gonna say, like myself. you mean from like the music standpoint, or like like what's going on around the music. Like which Everything. part of it is, is better and or trash? Uh, so it's more about holistic, right? So 
there were a lot of great people, right? Yeah. In the 2000s, a lot of great music that yeah. I can go on, you know, hours and hours, there's a set. But the problem is, it was like, it was, uh, it wasn't as deep. It wasn't as many people, yeah. you know, you, yeah. you look down on the bench, it's like, is it your starting five or is the whole team <laughs> rolling? You know, on, in the 90s, there were like a lot of quote unquote throwaways that were still like, they were killers, right? You had all these different groups, all right, you had all these different uh, solo artists, yeah. right? R and B was killing it, hip hop was killing it. All those sounds were outside and getting a lot of respect. Gospel was doing his thing. Country, a lot of them actually saw their height in that period. Not to own, mention the money, the injection of money, yeah, like okay. was aligned completely with the success that you saw. It's like, hey man, we making so much money. Let's keep throwing some more money. Let's put a million dollars in a music video yeah, so we have some yeah, more more creative yeah, space. I feel it. I feel it. So when you track it. A part of that might be because, hey, man, that money was, it dipped in the 2000s, right? Like early 2000s, Napsters, all that shit. All right, things start going down. We can only maybe invest unless you're only the top. You got to be at the top, right? We're figuring it out. And then you have this period, accessibility increases, right? Because of technology. Uh, distribution awareness increases because of social media, yeah. right? And then... I don't know why there weren't like as many bands and things like that, but like you start seeing more of those come out. Then the Kendrick Lamars and Drake, I felt like Kendrick, Drake, Drake actually, almost individually, Drake, Nikki, like they were almost like the beginning of the next golden era or close to gold. Yeah. Like there, there was a there was a drought. Like, hey, when Wayne was saying I'm the best in the world, there was nobody saying. No, nah, you not. Yeah. What other area? Like in the nineties, they'll be like, "Nah, bro, I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the best." Like there wasn't even nobody trying to challenge them. You yeah. know, what I'm yeah. <laughs> you just that's how like how you know it was some monsters there, but it was really top heavy in yeah. that period. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I can, I think I can agree with that because I also think that era was the start of like they were like the grandfathers of the internet era today. Because I mean, yeah, like exactly like most of those artists. I think I found like. Kendrick Lamar and I know I found J. Cole off of YouTube. You know what I'm saying? I remember I always remember I can remember the day yep. I found J. Cole's music off of exactly YouTube. Exactly where I found both of them. So it's like they would have started kinda like whether I don't know if they think of it like that, but they would have started like the way we view shit today, you know what I'm saying? Yep. They they trained us. And I also think too, like, because there's so much that gets pushed out at you, like even though people like to make the argument that there's a lot you there's a lot of less quality music today it's because there are more people putting stuff out. I would argue there's also more quality music out there yeah. because of the same thing, right? So it's like back then you might know like four five R and B artists at one point now, but you know like eighty, you know what I'm saying? At least <laughs> you know, really more than that. If you start mm -hmm. going down the line a little bit, bro, it's really more than that, you know. Yep. Which I guess is there's pros and cons to that, you know, that's probably some 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 steep cons, but I feel like the pros <laughs> outweigh the cons in my opinion. It depends on what side of the table you are. Yeah, right? exactly. Right. If you're the artist, it probably sucks. As it a consumer, it's great. You, it's, yeah. it's, it's an increase of middle class for the artist <laughs> yeah. and decrease in the top. Hey, I'm killing it. The numbers. I'm. Yeah. Hey, my money is stupid, and I'm looking down on the rest of you guys. It's like, yeah. nah, we we, we we all about right here. Yeah, man. we yeah. all about right here. <laughs> trying to figure out how somebody can get to the top of this thing. <laughs> yeah, that that's that's where it's at. But that yeah, exactly. That's why I feel like yeah, it's we're in. A, it's a beautiful space, right? And there's a lot of things happen around it. Like, like I said, all the curators. The shows, like there's so much energy around it, so much variety where there's been variety before, but people are figuring it out, right? And, the, yeah. and people are figuring out how to make the money and get the money from it. So now we can put more energy into it because at the end of the day, people got to eat, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, once you know where that money comes from, okay, I can figure out how I can spend a little more time over here. Yeah. So like we're we're entering a great space like for music, financially and Obviously, on the most important part, creatively, artistically, not the existence of the uh, creativity, because I know it always has been there, but in the the awareness of it and yeah. being able to package it like you know, like it's supposed to be. That's that's all. You know, I know because when we talk about errors, people are like, eh, I feel like objectively, I go deeper in another day, but I feel like objectively, uh, yeah, I get it, bro. There's like, some I, arguments. I wouldn't, I wouldn't <laughs> trade. I don't think I would trade being in any any other music period. Uh, for the one that we're in now, I think one like it probably been much harder to be like a marketer in the nineties, oh, yeah, two thousand, because no. it would have been like purely relationship based. You know what I'm saying? Now you can kind of hop in the game with no relationships. Like if you truly don't know anybody, you oh, can yeah. still start. 
building yourself up. But then also, I think from an artist standpoint, hold on, hold on, I'll say we would not we would not exist as we are today. Like, yeah, easy, uh, we would yeah. have to work at a label. Yeah, like outright from the gate down yeah. there. Yeah, unless we was like. I don't know, have built up some crazy like local street team or something. Because I've heard stories like that, like people building like local street teams or parties yeah. or something else. People get brought be into... on some Uncle Luke type shit. Yeah, exactly. And people like yeah. that. That that that's a very real route. But for the most part, yeah, nah. Yeah, and I, would, I, don't, I don't know if I could have did that route, but because you would have had to be a, a, a extroverted personality, probably. Yeah, be outside club outside. promoter, yeah. like you know, one of those type of hustling individuals. Yeah. And yeah, that's a that's a special type of special type, type of person, bro. Type of person, yeah. yeah. And that goes to the artist point. I always make this one point with artists, right? Anytime an artist talks about like making content, like mm-hmm. how much it sucks, I'm always like, bro, like 10, 15 years ago, you would have had to go like stand on the corner somewhere, like slinging CDs, you know, harassing <laughs> random people on the street to try to get them to stop and talk to you. It's like today. You could do that, but from the comfort of your own home, right? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know about every artist, bro. Maybe some of them built different, but I would much rather make a TikTok than stand on the corner for five, six hours a day, bro. That's the, it's like this is, I don't know, man. I can make my TikToks, throw them up, and then shit. If I wanted to go take a nap, bro, while I'm sleep, still building people, <laughs> like bringing exactly. people in, the bro. Content still moving, <laughs> bro. Like. It is crazy to think about sometimes. Like, no, they were actually doing that. Like, like getting, bro, like getting they were up. Really? Like yeah. Going down to the <laughs> local print shop. Bodega and yeah, shit. Bro, yeah, bro. Getting 300 CDs pressed up, carrying them shits around. I was like, bro, I would not have done that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I know I'm not an artist, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but, like, and I, I, I tell most artists that don't make content, I'm like, bro, you would not have survived in the era because you won't even make. Five TikToks from the comfort of your air conditioned room, bro. Like you think you you want me to believe you would have stood on the corner for five six hours, bro? No, you wouldn't have. You would have been back then talking like, man, I gotta go stand on the corner for five hours, bro. I ain't about to do it. It's the exact yeah. same shit, bro. bro. Just like just different era. Every <laughs> every era has some things that artists would not like to do, but they gotta do it. Yeah, and then the ones that do it, they make it. Or I mean, or at least get closer to making it. Right. So yeah. pick your problems. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. Do you want to be? slanging CDs or do you want to be making YouTube videos, TikTok and videos? And even if you're going to slang CDs, because we have one client that still does like the street thing. Like, yeah, yeah. But I'm like, bro, like do that with the internet stuff. Like if you're going to do it, at least have the internet stuff on top. You know what I'm saying? Don't like completely disregard it because you feel like this is the old school way is better because it's like, bro, bro I promise, it, it, make sure people see it. Yeah, exactly. You can do just that, but make sure people actually see that you're doing it and that's going to give you extra points. What I've never seen any of them do and I would love to see it. I would love to get an ad that says like, "Hey, I'm handing out CDs on the corner of Euclid and what's where I go? What's the what's little five points here? Euclid Damn. and whatever, bro. I don't know. Let's I'm be handing Memorial. out. I'm be handing out. I'm, I'm, Memorial, I'm, I'm be selling CDs on the corner of Euclid, and whatever, from two to five. Come check me out. This is a short Instagram ad that maybe pops up. You know what I'm saying on my timeline. <laughs> 20 minutes before they started doing this. I've never yeah. seen that before. Yeah. But they'll be following me. I'll be like, damn, man, I'm over here by a little five points. Let me go. Let me go see what's up over there. You know, you know what? That that makes me think of something, <laughs> right? Because the biggest opportunities in marketing aren't necessarily like in the action of the thing you do while you're doing it. Yeah. It's how you flip the shit. Right? Which is like that actually is a perfect segue into this clip we're gonna talk about. But like if I market this, you know what? I'm I'm, I'm actually gonna wait. We're, we're gonna talk about this clip. So, M. Triplin, you remember remember him? Yeah. All right. So maybe I could play it during uh, make that pop up on the podcast. I feel like his music's not at a point where we'll get a strike or anything yet. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. We'll we'll just have we'll throw it up in post, right? Throw it up to the side in a tweet or something, but. But basically, this guy M. Triplin, he performed at Rolling Loud. He and there were only thirteen people. And it probably was, you know, a, a little bit more, a little bit less. But he made he put out a tweet. It said, "Performed at Rolling Loud for thirteen people. Got to start somewhere. Put the prayer hands up." Now, the beauty of this is he tweeted this. He could have just like felt all sad about himself. Dang, do I want to do this in life? All that good stuff. You know how people get down in the dumps. Instead, he tweeted it, and he just said he was thankful. You know what I mean? Put prayer hands up. Got to start somewhere. That humility went viral, where most people have been like, dang, that's an L. 
he got made fun of by some people, but he also had a hell of people be like, yo, that's dope. Keep going. Keep trying. Da, 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 da. All that good stuff. I'm going to go do some comments. Well, of course, you know, people start spamming it by now. Let's see. Where is he at? 11,000 retweets. 1,700 plus quote tweets, right? He went viral flipping a moment that was an L into a positive just by putting it out there, making people aware. And then on TikTok, he basically talked about his viral tweet, right? So he said, all right, one, I only performed for 13 people on Twitter, right? And because of that, 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 he put that out there, that went viral. Then he did a TikTok. Yo, that moment became a viral moment and now people know me. Right. So then he highlighted the fact that he was going viral in a different tweet. I mean, in a, in a TikTok, that shit did a million plus views. Now, a lot of people know who he are. Now we're talking about him right now. And it's all because he took an L and flipped it, period. So if you put a billboard out in the city, it's only going to be seen by so many people. But if you take a picture of that billboard, you put it on the Internet. Now more people going to see it. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so you do the marketing campaign that you're talking about. Oh, I, I put up an ad, yo, in 20 minutes, you know, come on out here. Um, I'm going to be on the corner of Euclid and X Street. I'm going to be handing out CDs, maybe doing a little performance. Who knows how many people come out? Five people come out. But I get that footage. Yeah. And I make it look lit like we had a good time together while we are out there. Yeah. And then I capture and tell the story about how I ran an ad and people came out and yeah. made that shit look good. And now people are talking about, yo, he did a unique, crazy campaign. Who cares about how successful the campaign was itself a lot of times? It's just the story that you did something different. Yeah. So, like, like, the whole game, especially as an artist, you got to be resourceful and just keep flipping and flipping. That's what the marketing and branding stuff is about. Those stories are like badges where people... Like now know you, you were stamping their mind. And they was like, I remember when he did this and it popped him off. That's that's kind of how you gotta look at it. Yeah, yeah. And and two, I think like it's a it's like a marriage of those two worlds, right? Cause I always think there's a battle between like digital marketing and then I don't know the word for it. We're just gonna call it real world. Real world. Yeah, like physical real world. physical world is what Mark Zuckerberg like he doesn't like real world okay, because yeah. of the whole metaverse. Like, yeah. no, that's the real world. <laughs> the so, physical world <laughs> so digital marketing versus like physical like yeah. physical world marketing and it's like I think that there are too many artists who fight for the, the physical they're, they're in denial it's like it's, <laughs> it's the internet age bro I always tell people artists bro you gotta think about user behavior and what we prefer and like as people we prefer the internet so we're not going back over here just because yeah. you as the artist feels like it just is what it is it is what it is right and there's those who fight for the digital and the argument against digital is that like you can just become seen as like just an internet figure, right? Like people only kind of know you as the guy that, the TikTok rapper, the YouTube rapper, right? Because like, they don't see you outside. I feel like the marriage of the best world is is marrying both of those two things. Like when you can have a really effective ad funnel and you can go put together a, a, a pop up, you know what I'm saying, street performance on on the, on the street in your hometown, right? Yeah. Because like you said, like. The perception of it is gonna be crazy because people are gonna be like, "Oh, this he doing some shit that ain't never been done." When it's like, not really. You just combining things that people don't see get done in combination a lot. You know, it's the story. Yeah, yeah. it's the story. And then it's like if you really, as an artist, feel like that you're gonna be here for a while. Or at least what I tell artists, not even if you think you're gonna be here. If you don't plan on like quitting anytime soon, like quitting anytime, I'll say in the next one to three years, if you have any idea, the idea is gonna work out because, like, like you said, it becomes a part of the narrative. Right. And as the narrative gets strong, as you do things, the narrative gets stronger because there's more time to add in things into the narrative, right? Your narrative before might be like, you no, know, day one of it is like, damn, I did this thing and I had five people show up on the street for me. And like, that's the narrative you run with in the in the moment. It's gonna be inspirational to somebody. Somebody's gonna be like, damn, that's crazy, bro. You, you did all this to five people and blah, 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 right? Year and a half from now, you do that shit again and you get, I don't know, 500 people. Now the narrative is like, man, it's crazy. Just last year, all I had was five people here. You know what I'm saying? Now I got 500. Thank you guys, blah, blah, blah. And then you look different, right? Three years go by and you you do your first headlining show, you know what I'm saying, in, in, in your town. Right. Now the narrative is like, man, it's crazy, man. Just three years ago, I performed on the corner for these five people. She, even just a year ago, I came out here and there was only 500 people came to see me. But today I'm looking at 3,000 smiling faces. It's like the narrative is crazy at that point, but it's a narrative you've been building for the last couple of years. You know what I'm saying? And I, I don't think ours 
like think about it, it's like we we fall in love with the story. Like, That's all it is. Yeah, it's just a story, bro. That's like, all it is. and it takes a long time to put together a good story. But think, <laughs> think about this, bro. <laughs> Would La Russell be doing what he's doing now if he performed those performances in his backyard? Mm -hmm. Right, the whole bunch of dope clips. We know he got some. He got some lyrics, right? So it's just performances, him doing his lyrics, right? And then he has some radio uh, performances as well. So he has those backyard performances. He had the radio performances, dope freestyles. But what would happen if you didn't know that that was his backyard? Like how I feel about personally, or just like what do I think? Would you even know about him, or would he be as popping as he is? I don't think the the story would be as stronger as strong or uh, stronger because like I think his his brand seems to be leaning towards like the humble DIY guy. You know what I'm saying? Like like my humble guy, I'm doing this shit no differently than like you you or you could be. He doing. gives off humble to you? Yeah. He don't give off humble to me. He gives off he like, gives off I'm flexing, I'm killing this shit DIY now, guy. I think now like maybe okay. in like his like life, Russ like yeah, like you know exactly, what I mean? Yeah. 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 I think like maybe in the last like two three weeks, but even in that like it feels I I get. Why artists of that caliber feel like they have to move that way because it's still not a, as respected of a thing. You know? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what? There's a that's a different type of humble. Uh, <laughs> so because there, there's two things, right? One, I always feel like the people who put in the work. Hey man, you you, you humble just to put in the work because the people who don't put in the work are the ones who have head too big to think they don't yeah, got to do it, yeah, right? Yeah. Then yeah. two, I don't know if it's humble or overcoming. Or not, or or being so about it. To me, La Russell seems about his business yeah. that you don't care about all this fake perception and stuff. That a lot of artists won't do stuff because they feel like that's my hum humble thing, or I won't be seen as a certain perception. Yeah. So like the the hustlers are humble because they know they got to do what they got to do to get what they got to get. Right. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. That's one thing why street artists y'all complain about these street artists and street music, but boy, these street artists, hey man, they. Oh, I gotta pay to do something. Oh, let me go get the bag. Let me yeah. figure that out. Like I gotta do X, Y, and Z. They, 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 they hustle. But like back to La Russell. All right, if you don't know it's his backyard, if you don't know that he's doing this campaign where you can pay whatever you want, all of those things, despite what the numbers are doing, like I said, our story. Then the fact he's doing them successful successfully, that becomes even bigger story, yeah. right? Yeah. And you share and you share. I think. His his project sold like I don't know it was like twelve hundred units or something I don't know I I just saw the number in passing but like the fans don't even know if that's a big or little number yeah they have to tell the story like that oh this is amazing number for independent artists yeah you know what I mean yeah this is the top number for independent artists because that could sound little when you just think oh well what did Kendrick Lamar sell. Or you don't you you buy it you don't even know how much you sell so it's your job to keep telling the story and make them aware of it. The story is especially for uh, indie like it is the superpower. Yeah, right? it is the superpower. So so yeah, one Russell's killing that and this guy shout out to M Triplin um again for sharing your story and making a moment out of it, taking that L and flipping it like whatever y'all paid to get on that stage. I'm sure it's worth it now. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> But hey, man! Shout out, shout out to y'all. The, the last thing I'll say too about the tripling things I meant to say earlier, but what I respected about that is that like, if you've been at any of these festival stages early enough to see the open ash, you know that's how it usually is anyway. So I be so yeah, bro. It's like they really just be trying to convince. Like going back to the fans on no shit, bro. I need to convince the fans that shit was lit. So I respect him for doing that because like anybody that's ever been, oh. they, they already knew, bro. They hey, knew hey. Cause what happens with everybody else? Everybody else share the pic that's on or the view that is just showing them, and they make it seem like it was lit as fuck, and everybody was there for him. Yeah, that's the game. That's the game. That's the game. And he flipped it by going against it and said, "Hey, man, it wasn't nobody here." Yeah, well, it, was, it was me, <laughs> me and these thirteen people. But hey, I was here and I had fun, bro. Hey, so, that's what I respect about that shit. That, hey, uh, man. <laughs> that, hey, that, that's that's crazy, man. That's crazy. It's like just not flexing becomes the flex when yeah. everybody flexing. Hey, because it is. I think, I think music fans are starting to get trained to be entertained by the more like real side of what it is to be a music artist. Because there's more indie artists than there are, you know, like majorly popping artists, whatever sound we want to call those. So like that's the real story of of, of so many more people. You know, like it's right. the, it's the it's, it's the reality of it. And I think people are starting to kind of get that and like sense that. 
Especially as like a lot of artists start to be more like open about shit like that. And then if you are in the game yourself, like you know, you already know. You so you maybe just won't highlight that moment of yourself, but every artist has has, has been through that at some point. You know what I'm saying? Like every artist I'm performing in front of a, 13 people and it's like bro you at Rolling Loud just because you at Rolling Loud which I think is the biggest learning moment for a lot of artists especially ones that pay for it because like you said like you said a very important thing at the end however much you pay for this shit I'm sure you got your money's worth <laughs> <laughs> out of it because of this content thing but there are so many who go here and think like oh it's Rolling Loud like it's yeah. gonna be I don't know how many people go 50,000 people here somebody gonna come watch me and it's like no bro they really might not <laughs> like because nobody knows who you are why yeah think I, about I, that <laughs> what are you gonna do with this content beyond this moment because this, this moment might not be as lucrative as you think it's gonna be but what are you gonna do with this shit on the internet yep to make it worth it so i think that's the most important thing because you're right but if that hadn't happened i mean maybe he would have got the value from just having the, the experience right yeah walking the stage it's doing, felt I mean, good I mean, you know, like inspiration well, yeah, and well, shit. Well, does a good job with their stage setup, man. It'd be a cool thing to go through. But yeah. Yeah, he got easy, I would guess, at least 20x return. Bro, I'd be hurt, man, if I was somebody who performed the same day or last year and I only had five people show up. I'm like, dang, bro, I should have did that. Yeah. <laughs> I was up here showing my feelings. I didn't see the vision, <laughs> man. I should have flexed about how few people showed up. Yeah, bro. If it was now me, you can't do it because he already did it. He's like, oh, no, nah, you, you just copying. If it was me, bro, like I would have went home and made a YouTube video about the whole thing. Like, yo, I paid. Well, well I mean, I guess we can't. We shouldn't say that because we don't know. You know what I'm saying? Well, we know. You know, I feel like we know, but we don't know. You know yeah, we don't. Well, yeah, you know, well, but I would have made a video about yo, I performed for Rolling Loud for the first time here. But I would have really, I would have milked that shit so much. Now that that can still happen. Yeah, you can yeah, still yeah. do I perform first time, even if you not him. Yeah. But if he has footage, that'd be dope to if you like. You know, peel back and then show that and kind of keep the the thing going. That'd yeah. be dope. Yeah, bro. If you see this, like that that one's on the house. <laughs> do that. Do that. I did. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> but man. Well, look. These are are the topics and the things that we talk about on episodes like this. Again, this is no label necessary. The very first pod. Let us know if you liked it. You know what I mean. And if you like it. You know, put some comments and everything. We're not supposed to give more than one call to action, but I'm going to give you all two today. Put some comments in the <laughs> comment section. You know what I mean? Let us know. And then also watch another video after this. That's how y'all show us love, bro. Just get, get our watch time up and then we'll we'll reap the benefits. You know what I'm saying? So appreciate yeah. y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. And if you're new here, uh, just like and subscribe. This is the third call to action. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We mix it up. We go. <laughs> look, we gonna put a checklist of action items for y'all to take at the bottom. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but hey, man, it, it, it's Sean. Uh, it's Corey, and we out of here. Peace. Peace.